Hey guys, it's Mrs. Kleinley with this week's First Chapter Friday. This week, I'm very excited to be sharing with you Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. Now, Brown Girl Dreaming is actually something what's called a memoir. Um, and Jacqueline Woodson's a pretty well-known children's author. Memoirs are collections of someone's memories. So these are found in our biography section of our library, um, but they have their own little sublocation within biography, which is called memoir, because a memoir really is not the same thing as a biography. Biographies give you an overview of somebody's life from typically from birth through adulthood or birth through death or whatever it may be. But a memoir is a collection of the person's memories and um, they typically follow a theme. So this memoir by Jacqueline Woodson is all about her childhood memories, which is why it's called Brown Girl Dreaming, uh, growing up. And she lived in a couple of different locations in her childhood, which you'll get to hear about if you choose to read this. So just to show you here, if you go to our online catalog, there's a topic right here listed for a memoir. And if you select it, you'll see we don't have a ton of memoirs. This is a section I'm trying to build up a little bit um, in our Palmer Library, but you'll be able to see all of the um, memoirs that we do have. And again, they are a collection of memories. So usually they're shorter chapters. The one I'm going to read to you today, uh, Brown Girl Dreaming, she actually writes novels in verse. Um, so her each uh, chapter is actually a, a quick little poem. So the book starts off pretty early in her childhood. She is living with both of her parents and she's one of three siblings. Um, eventually there becomes another sibling. The family moves in with the grandparents, then they relocate to New York. So she did do quite a bit of moving around um, in her childhood. And she had her grandparents played a, a huge role in her upbringing. Um, and she, it gets a little tricky when you're reading the story because the beginning of the story, she has a mom and a dad who she refers to as daddy. And then she ends up moving in with her grandparents. And then she starts to call her grandfather daddy as well. So you have to kind of remember, like, when you're reading this at the beginning of the book, daddy is her her biological father. And then as soon as she moves in with the grandparents, she starts referring to her grandfather as daddy. So that can get a little bit tricky. So we're going to jump in right here. Um, the first section is called Part One, I Am Born. And the first excerpt that I'm going to read you is called February 12th, 1963. I'm born on a Tuesday at University Hospital, Columbus, Ohio, USA, a country caught between black and white. I'm born not long from the time or far from the place where my great, great grandparents worked the deep, rich land, unfree, dawn till dusk, unpaid, drank cool water from scooped out gourds, looked up and followed the sky's mirrored constellation to freedom. I am born as the South explodes. Too many people, too many years, enslaved, then emancipated, but not free. The people who look like me keep fighting and marching and getting killed, so that today, February 12th, 1963, and every day from this moment on, brown children like me can grow up free, can grow up learning and voting and walking and riding wherever we want. I'm born in Ohio. But the stories of South Carolina already run like rivers through my veins. My birth certificate says female Negro. Mother, Mary Ann Irby, 22, Negro. Father, Jack Austin Woodson, 25, Negro. In Birmingham, Alabama, Martin Luther King Jr. is planning a march on Washington where John F. Kennedy is president. In Harlem, Malcolm X is standing on a soapbox talking about a revolution. Outside the window of University Hospital, snow is slowly falling. So much already covers this vast Ohio ground. In Montgomery, only seven years have passed since Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a city bus. I am born brown-skinned, black-haired, and wide-eyed. I am born Negro here and colored there, and somewhere else. The freedom singers have linked arms, their protests rising into song. Deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. And somewhere else, James Baldwin is writing about injustice, each novel, each essay changing the world. I do not yet know who I will be, what I'll say, how I'll say it. Not even three years have passed since a brown girl named Ruby Bridges walked into an all-white school. Armed guards surrounded her while hundreds of white people spat and called her names. She was six years old. 
I do not know if I'll be strong like Ruby. I do not know what the world will look like when I'm finally able to walk, speak, write. Another Buckeye, the nurses say to my mother. Already I'm being named for this place, Ohio, the Buckeye State. My fingers curl into fists automatically. This is the way, my mother said, of every baby's hand. I do not know if these hands will become Malcolm's, raised and fisted, or Martin's, open and asking, or James's, curled around a pen. I do not know if these hands will be Rosa's or Ruby's, gently gloved and fiercely folded, calmly in a lap on a desk, around a book, ready to change the world. All right, guys. So again, our book this week is Brown Girl Dreaming. It is a memoir, which means these are the true stories of Jackie Jacqueline Woodson uh, growing up. Um, she really grew up at a time when our country was experiencing quite a bit of turmoil, especially in the South. And she, her grandparents were living in South Carolina, and that's where she spent a good portion of her childhood. Um, so I think this book is really great. I really have um, started to enjoy to read memoirs because I think it's interesting to hear somebody's um, recollection of their life and and how they kind of tie it together. So I hope you enjoy this. And if this isn't a good one for you, feel free to check out the other memoirs we have available um, because it really is it really does help students kind of step outside their comfort zone with reading. And you might see something there that you like. We have funny ones, we have dramatic ones, we have emotional ones. Um, so I really think that you will enjoy checking out some memoirs. Happy reading.